Hey, so we're going to do a teaching video here on the problem of the inconsolable infant. And we've got the perfect infant here. This is a, a pretty little girl that is five days old and um, is here because she was having inconsolable crying. Mom, can you tell us a little bit what was going on at home? Um, she wasn't uh, eating a lot around 2 or 3 a.m. or like she normally does when she does feedings. Um, and she wouldn't take a pacifier. She was having issues um, with her belly and gas. And she was just she was just crying inconsolable. Oh yeah. You How long she did she can, cry? Um, probably around two hours. Okay. Um, they, we tried everything. So. Okay. And then when you got here, um, they were doing a rectal temp. Yeah, and then it was like a pressure valve releasing all the gas. Okay, she, so it was fairly dramatic. Oh yeah. yeah. And a little stool came with it, and then all of a sudden she was. Better, quiet, crying, no longer crying, just quiet. Uh, no longer crying. Um, she was able to actually eat because it had been around six hours okay. since she ate. So, so our, our subject matter expert over here. Um, so when you have a crying infant coming in, you're a pediatric resident, uh, but when you have a, a, an inconsolable crying on an infant under three months of age, what sort of things do you think about? So um, there are various things that could possibly cause an infant to cry a lot. And one of the most common ones will be like they're hungry yeah. and they're not having enough to eat. And this could also be seen in, especially in infants where their moms are trying to breastfeed and they're not having enough supply. So there's not enough supply to kind of meet that demand of the hunger. There's also like for kids that have been exposed to drugs, like when they're in their belly of their mom, um, it could also be um, kids like that. With so like an abstinence syndrome. An abstinence Got syndrome. It. Um, it could also be, um, from colic, like what the mom was trying to describe. And this is mostly like seen in infants that are like less than three months old. They're crying for it because crying for like one, two hours is normal. Yeah, there's like a lot crying. of crying that goes on at, at this age. So what about some soothing techniques? Like just taking a walk, just giving them a different environment, like some white noise. Because this um, babies are so used to being cushioned inside yeah. the belly. So this is like kind of weird for them to be out here and there's all those different sounds and all of that. So what about a baby those, swing? Yeah, a swing, white noise, like whatever, like what kind of recordings like, of speak. heartbeats, I've heard that. Yeah, so. that helps. And what about like rubbing the belly of his belly? Yeah, and, and sometimes bicycling the legs, sometimes to kind of push that gas or whatever is there um, out, like also helps as well. <laughs> Is colic life-threatening? 
It is not life-threatening. It's, it's not life-threatening, although sometimes it does lead to child abuse because parents are just get so frustrated they, they, they take it out on the baby. So um, if a parent finds themselves reaching that point, they, they need to uh, put the baby, make sure the diaper's changed, make sure the baby's well-fed, put the baby in the bed in a, in a safe position, and then walk out of that room. And, and, and um, crying is not going to kill the baby. Crying is not going to hurt the baby. Uh, they do it all the time. They're experts at it. And so we, um, uh, that, that is an important caveat, though. Uh, getting some support, I mean, talking to other mothers who have had babies and, and what worked for them, uh, I think is also important. <laughs>